Hello and welcome to The Catch-Up. My name is Damon Blake. Joining me as always is my co-host George Fox. This show, if you have not watched the show before, is about two comedians originally from Ireland, one based in Scotland, one based in Ireland still, unfortunately. And we're just catching up because of being locked down the pandemic. George, how are you doing? I'm terrible as always, but here we are trying to make connections with each other and trying to support each other and other people by letting them see how badly and poorly we're doing. And as always, we have a guest this week to tell us how poorly they're doing to make you at home, the audience, feel better. And this week, we've got a special guest. You've seen them on Tri Channel. You've seen them perform in comedy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, our guest, Darren Lawler. Hey guys, what's up? That was the worst energy anyone's come on to the show. (laughs) And I very much respect it as well. I'll drink more. Darren, thanks for coming on to the show today. Um, As every week we check in with our friends, we know you from Irish comedy scene. We know you from the Tri Channel. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have not physically known you for more than a year now. So could you let us know what have you been up to? Physically known sounds kind of dirty, doesn't it? It's like... I wasn't going to say... Intimate relations. We're going to see where things go. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So what have you been up to uh, in this year of pandemic? Over the last year or so, um, I've been getting even more super into whiskey than I already had been. I uh, started working in the whiskey industry back in 2018 and have been in there in various roles ever since. And it's been a, it's been fun. It's been a good way to kind of kill time in lockdown because what else are you going to do except stay home and, and drink whiskey? So you've had a lot of whiskey-based uh, occupations over the last year. Yeah. And is that a case where they say don't bring your work home with you or but, was it just naturally that's what you could find? It's kind of, I kind of fell into it because... Before I started in the whiskey industry, I didn't didn't like whiskey. I hated the stuff. And then from working with it, it was like, oh, I get an appreciation for it. I know the proper way to drink it, what to look for. So it's kind of been with a developing thing over the uh, last year. I 100% agree with you, Darren, about not liking something. And then you work with it long enough. Like uh, on Tri Channel, we work with actors. Yeah. And I don't like actors. Mm. And I hope maybe if I work a Tri Channel for another five or six decades, maybe I'll start to warm to them. <laughs> maybe. Some people warm to other people thanks to alcoholic beverages. So, mm-hmm. Darren, what's the appeal of whiskey if that's going to be your tuple of choice? It's one of those weird in vogue things now, because for so many years, whiskey was seen as the drink that your granddad had with his pint of Guinness or something like that. And, you know, a lot of the whiskey companies trying to market it to a younger generation with this hip and trendy, trendy drink. Um, the way they do that is by mixing it with something that makes it not taste like whiskey anymore, which is kind of ironic. Those Tide Pods. That was weird when they tried to bring out like the whiskey Tide Pods. I throw up and my clothes are cleaner, so. <laughs> <laughs> you just constantly smell like you're an alcoholic. It's great. No change. Whiskey's a weird drink because it's one of those things that it takes so long to make. Like in Ireland, minimum three years before you can legally call mm. something whiskey. So I think people like that element of it. You know, it's a... Uh, it's taking its time. It's not in any rush to get to you. People like specific like rules and things like that, which is which is fun considering people in Dublin will down any drink that is in front of them once it gets past three or four pints. So it's it's nice at the start of the night they have a little bit of clarity on their choices. But pretty much anything that is made in I only said the island of Scotland, because sometimes it does feel like Scotland is an island. Um Soon. Yeah, soon. Did I tell you guys my uh, my way to solve both uh the Scottish independence issue and uh, the uh, Irish reunification. We just get everyone in Scotland and everyone in Northern Ireland and just get them to swap. Like a, like a wife swap deal. Pretty much, yeah, country swap. If we've learned anything from wife swap, it always makes the relationship stronger. <laughs> yeah, I think that will work. I've been on whiskey tasting course classes and courses and I've very much enjoyed it. I like anything where I get to dilute what I'm having myself because I'm a weak boy. But one thing I've always heard of over the years is that there is a difference between Scottish and Irish whiskey. Mm-hmm. And considering both George and myself are in those countries, what should we know about the differences between the whiskey? So in terms of legality, any whiskey made in Ireland is Irish whiskey. Any whiskey made in Scotland is Scottish whiskey. Scotland has more distilleries and more regions, so they have more distinct styles. So things like your Isle of Scotches from the islands would be more kind of smoky and peaty, and then like your Speyside mm. and Campbelltown Scotches would be kind of a bit, a uh, bit lighter, a bit milder. The whiskies I would know would be, say, your traditionals, your your Jack Daniels, your Jamesons. Mm -hmm. Is there any other types of whiskies you would recommend people checking out? Yeah, so Redbreast is my favourite style of whiskey. It's from the same place that makes Jameson because one distillery produces a lot of the whiskies that are made in Ireland. Redbreast, Powers, Paddy, Jameson. But that's what I'm currently drinking. 21-year-old Redbreast Mm -hmm. because I'm bougie as fuck. (laughs) 
I love a whiskey that if it was a person would also be of legal age. Yeah, old enough to drink itself in America. I like an alcohol that would tell me about its own podcast in a smoking area. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> whiskey is one of those things where as it gets older, it gets more expensive. The value and the quality versus the taste isn't always there. Mm. A whiskey released last year for like 45,000 euros because it was 45 years old. And at a certain point, you have to wonder if anybody's drinking this, are they actually enjoying it? Or are they just saying, hmm. I have enough money to drink a 45,000 euro whiskey? I think it's just big dick energy. Which, which <laughs> for- <laughs> well, Darren, you would know I would. because uh, all the blood in your body is going somewhere and it's not your face. Yeah. So. <laughs> is, it, is it just me or does big dick energy sound like a Texas oil man? Well, that's a man who could afford 45 grand's worth of uh, booze, I guess. Mm-hmm. Well, I love decadence as evidenced by the dressing gown I'm wearing today, not just because it's snowing uh, here in Ireland. I've tried different whiskeys over the years. I know Jameson has a distinct taste, mm-hmm. but is it true that the members of the Jameson family themselves had their own distinct uh, tastes? So one of the great grandsons of John Jameson. So he was on, a, on an expedition in Africa in the end of the 19th century as which people often did, they were wont to do. He uh, decides that he wants to see um, an act of cannibalism. So he procures Mm. a 10-year-old slave girl from a local tribe for the price of six handkerchiefs, and they promptly eat this 10-year-old girl while James Jameson makes sketches of it. He sounds like the original TikTok prankster. Well, Darren, thank you for catching up and for the nightmares. (laughs) Thanks, Darren. Thanks, Uh, Darren, for the most insane story that we've had on the podcast so far. It suddenly makes me feel less bad about the year. So actually, genuinely, thank you. Darren, thank you so much for joining us today. Is there anything else you got going on in the real world? Yeah, so like you can find me on Twitter, at Darren Lawler. Instagram as well. Uh, it's mostly just dog pictures. It's great. Um, <laughs> also, uh, you'll catch me on the Tri Channel uh, eating things and, and complaining about it. When you say things, you mean like food, not... Food. yes. This has gone on the internet, so I feel, I feel like I need to clarify right now. We think it's terrible that that happened and uh, has not been spoken about yeah. before. And also, if we're going to eat anyone, eat the rich. Well, Darren, thank you so much uh, for joining us here today. We look forward to seeing you in real life so much because we miss you terribly. You're one of our favourite people from Irish comedy and we've very much hope to see you again sometime soon in the near future. Thanks, guys. It was, uh, it was good to see you again. I love the way you qualified. You're one of our favorite people in Irish comedy. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's low down on the list of real life. Yeah. yeah. Like, let's get real. <laughs> That's a very small list of people. Tiny list. It it is, very tiny is, list. For those of you at home watching, we really appreciate it. Uh, it means the world to us. If you could like, if you could subscribe, if you could comment underneath, we read them and we reply to them and we do enjoy them. Uh, so please make sure to do that. And always keep coming back. We'll have more episodes with more fantastic guests in the future and more stuff coming up on the channel soon. So one more thank you to our wonderful guest, Darren Lawler. A thank you to my co-host, Damon Blake. A thank you to you for watching and we'll see you next time on The 